Hello and welcome to West Country Wanderings. A big welcome to my monthly vlog. My monthly vlog for the month of June 2023. I can't believe we've got to the end of the month already. It's been a very, very busy month on the channel this month. Been 14 videos. The 14th hasn't landed yet as I record this, but it will have done by the time we record this. Anyway, where are we today? And what's this vlog all about if you're new around here on West Country Wanderings? First of all, we're in Gloucestershire. We're in the Cotswolds and we're in the Cotswolds village of Chedworth. Now you may know Chedworth for a couple of reasons, one of which is the famous Roman villa, which is actually about three and a half miles north of here. Chedworth sits on the road between Cheltenham and Sirencester, or just off it, you actually drive through a little village called Rencombe, where there's a large private school called Rencombe College. Well, that's the way I came anyway. So we're north of Sirencester and south of the town of Cheltenham Spa. Beautiful valley here in the valley of the Chedworth Brook. Now, I forgot what it was then, but yeah, Chedworth Brook. The other reason you may know Chedworth is from railways, because near here is the Chedworth Tunnel. Maybe we'll have a look and see what we can and explore a little bit about the remains of the railway line, which was the MSWJR, the Midland South Western Junction Railway, which ran south from Cheltenham, heading down to, well, the coast basically, Andover, and then down towards Southampton. That's all long gone now. Uh, I think it, the last train, passenger train, closed in the 50s. The line closed in 61, I believe. So uh, we'll see what we can see of that, but I can't promise, because obviously I've got all this to cover. Now, a very warm welcome to you. If you are a new subscriber to West Country Wanderings, welcome to West Country Wanderings. And this is the first monthly vlog that you've seen on the channel. I'll just tell you a little bit more about the format before we continue. Each month I do a monthly vlog where I go through all of the videos that I've done for that particular month and I read out the very best of your wonderful comments from you, what wonderful subscribers and viewers of the channel here on West Country Wanderings. I always come to a location and then I tell you a little bit more about that location, which is what I'm going to do next. Now Chedworth sits right on the Monarch's Way, which we've come across before many, many times here on West Country Wanderings. I won't go and bore you with all the details again, but you know it's about uh, King Charles II fleeing from the Battle of Worcester, English Civil War, there yeah, 600 odd miles of it. Anyway, part of it passes through here, through the brook. I've actually crossed over part of it as I was coming, driving from Rencombe through a little hamlet called Chedworth Lanes. That's L-A-I-N-E-S. I'm not sure how that spelling came about, but uh, crossed over it there and there's a dead straight section of the Monarch's Way heading into the valley here and back up out the other side and then crossing over towards the southern portal. Well, that direction anyway, it's where the uh, railway tunnel is. Now also just north of the village here of Chedworth in the Cotswolds was once RAF Chedworth. This was built for the Second World War around about 1940. It played an important function, as did lots of the airfields hereabouts in Gloucestershire. There was very, very many of them. And uh, one of them now is RAF Kemble, of course, which is now known as the Cotswold Airport. And well, it's known as the Jumbo Jet Graveyard, but that's another story. This one here is now, well, there's not a great deal to see. I'll, I'll drive past it later on to see if I can get a shot of it. But uh, a lot of it, because it's agricultural land, has been completely grubbed out and there's very little remains of it. But uh, it was an important place during the Second World War. Now, before we go and have a look at the church here at Chedworth, which is essentially Norman, but a lot of it was restarred in the 15th century in the perpendicular style. So we'll have a look at that. I'll just explain about the first video that landed on my channel. It was actually a May video, but it went out on the very morning that I filmed May's monthly vlog. So I hadn't at that point seen the comments from it. And it was back over at the Malvern Hills in Worcestershire, which I've said before is my favorite part of the entire West Country wandering regions that I cover here on YouTube. Tremendous place, it seemed to go re down really well. I filmed it in the middle of May and was delighted to see bluebells there, as well as birds of prey flying over the top of those majestic hills there. I had a top comment from that from a gentleman called Michael Pilling, who lives in Poland and he is recovering from serious illness. Hope you're still recovering, Michael. We're all thinking about you both here on West Country Wanderings and over on Ron's channel, Parkinson's Walks. His comment was delightful. I will just read it to you now. What wonderful vistas. 
The scenery is breathtaking. I'd be tempted to just sit and not even think. Yes, it's a tremendous place. Thank you very much for that, Michael. Beautiful place. The lighting was just perfect to get some wonderful shots of the views across into Herefordshire. So this is Chedworth's magnificent church. The tower was built in the 11th century and the parapet around the other side added in the 12th century. A lot of the interior was redecorated in the decorated period around the 15th century. Excuse the cam making a lot of noise over there. Every time I start filming there's always something, a helicopter's just gone over as well. Anyway, 21st century problems, not a, not a real problem. This is a beautiful churchyard here. It's surprisingly large considering that the Chedworth itself is a surprisingly small little village here in the Cotswolds and it spreads out of course across the valley but it probably services the neighbouring villages like Woodmancote and Rencombe and several others I can't remember the names of now hereabouts just in this beautiful valley here nestled between Sirencester and Cheltenham. You can also see from this direction how high the church is above the village just down there nestled in the coombe below. It has a commanding position but this is a most beautiful Cotswold village. It does remind me a lot of the village of Slad near the town of Stroud which we visited on a previous video when I looked at the life of Laurie Lee. Now the next video that landed on my channel this month for the month of June was one in my Short Bites photography series. I've got two kinds of shorter videos. They're not the YouTube shorts, if you want to uh, understand what I'm, I'm trying to explain, you two do a format called shorts and you have to shoot it in portrait, what extended portrait format. It's not a format I like and it's not, if you're watching YouTube on a TV, it really isn't TV friendly. It's if you're watching YouTube on a mobile phone and you're turning it around that way. I, I'm, as a photographer, as well as a video YouTube creator, I like to shoot in cinematic 16 by 9 if I can. Sometimes I do the, the photos in 4 by 3 but that format, I just don't like that form. It's also too short. But my short bites are about between 5 and 10 minutes long and one of those that I do are the photography ones which are essentially photographs I've taken around our area. Sometimes do an introduction, sometimes I don't and sometimes they've got music, sometimes they've just got 
natural sounds. Enough of that. Linton, North Devon, stunning place. Oh, also need to say that Louise from Southwest Hyundai has also done an incredible video from there at sunset near where she used to work at Lee Valley in the Valley of the Rocks, which is just to the west of the town of Linton. Anyway, I went round Linton with my camera, took some shots of that amazing North Devon town, and I put it to some music, including some shots of the funicular railway there that goes between Linton, which is the, the town at the top, shall I say, and Linmouth, which is at the bottom of the cliffs there, right on the coast. It seemed to go down really well, that video, and it seems to be climbing as well as people are searching for places to go on holiday in the West Country. Got a top comment from David Bellani. He lives in Spain. Hi, David, and thank you very much for all your comments, right? I think he comments on every single video I do, and they are really, really great comments. I'm just going to include this one for this month, though, David. What a lovely place. Linton is in my AA book. Now, David's got loads of reference books and he obviously looked up Linton after he saw my video, went and had a look, see what it says about Linton. And it tells him that it became a refuge for the poet Shelley and his wife. I think it was a young wife, wasn't it? So I think she was only like 16. I can't remember how old he was. I just looked up about George Nunes. Amongst many notable interests, he published The Strand magazine, which was famous for printing the Sherlock Holmes stories in serial short form. Yes, now George Nunes, if you have a look at that video, you'll see I'll take a photograph of the statue. It was because of him that Linton and Lymouth became the resorts that we know them today. He also had built the Linton and Barnstable Railway, which I made a video about as well, which we talked about in May's vlog. But yeah, wonderful place. He was an incredible man and he made his wealth, as I say, from publishing like David Commons there. So thank you very much for that comment, David. Brilliant comment. And uh, he certainly contributed to the success of the Sherlock Holmes uh, book, shall I say, by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Nice handy wall to sit on here in the churchyard, or just on the edge of the churchyard. It's a stunning place. There's seats around here as well, so it's very, very convenient to do in pieces to camera and well away from the traffic. That uh, where I did the intro there was beautiful, but unfortunately it was near the road junctions and there was, well, delivering to the pub, which we'll have a look at as well. And uh, yeah, so it was a bit noisy, but it's quieter here. We've got the bird sound as well, as long as no helicopters uh, go overhead. The third video was uh, down in Cornwall, and it was at a place called Forder. Now, this seemed to go, well, strike people because few people had seemed to have heard of it. And the video did well, because I also shared it into the Solst Ash group on Facebook as well. If you're local to Salt Ash or South East Cornwall, you probably will be familiar with it. But if you holiday in Cornwall, probably less so, because most people either go down on the A30 or they go across the Tamar Bridge or down the Atlantic Highway, bypass it completely. So yeah, it's tucked away down. You have to go through the town centre of Salt Ash and then turn off left. But it's probably advisable to park near the church and walk down because there's very little parking there. I enjoyed my explore there, which then goes into the church town um, nature reserve, the Cornwall Wildlife Trust Nature Reserve, and you've got that fantastic viaduct, which isn't a Brunel one because it was replaced, as I explained in the video. In fact, the line, the Cornish Mellon, was rerouted a bit further to the north, a bit up the estuary just off the uh, Linna River, Linna there. I had a great comment from uh, John Timbrell, who lives in Gloucestershire in the Forest of Dean, I do believe, and he writes, I love this type of video, Paul. It makes a refreshing change from videos showing us well-known places. And I try to do that on the channel. I do visit places that are more well-known as well, because sometimes that does draw an audience in that people are seeking certain places out. But I certainly also like to find places that are a little bit off the beaten track, like we are here today. People go to the Roman Villa Chedworth, but not often do they come and explore this video. That's a video, <laughs> this village. And uh, they're missing something by not exploring the, this village, because it is tremendous. But uh, yeah, so I like, like to share that with you, my audience. It's exclusive. Don't tell anyone else about these places. So yes, <laughs> um, just keep it to us ourselves in our little uh, West Country Wanderings group. I valued it more because of that, because obviously it was wet, less well known. I hope I will have the time and the ability to visit it. Yes, I hope you do, John. It is a tremendous place, particularly for migrating birds and also estuary birds on the mudflats there with the river Linho as well. And it's a very, very peaceful and tranquil village, similar to uh, 
Chedworth here. It's, as I say, it's not on the coast, it's on a river there, and I caught it at low tide, and it is perhaps more photogenic at higher tide, but you can't always choose these things when you're in a certain location or going from to or from somewhere else, which I try to do. Sometimes I'll make a video as I'm going on to somewhere else to do two videos in the same location to make it more worthwhile. But uh, thank you if you watched that video, and thank you, John, for your comment. Now, before I go on to the next video on the channel, I'll just tell you a little bit of history about the the village here is one Sir Thomas D. Chadworth or D. Chedworth was born here in the 13th century. He was born here in 1230 and he wanted to become Archbishop of Dublin, but he was unsuccessful in that attempt. But yes, he left here, left Gloucester, left England across the Irish Sea, heading to Dublin to take up high positions over there. Now the fourth video on the channel was Seven Way 16. In fact, by the time you see this vlog, Seven Way 17 will uh, upload where I go from Starport to the city of Worcester. But 16 was going from Bewdley to Starport. It was a shorter stretch of the Seven Way, deliberately so, because I wanted to include a lot more content from Bewdley, because the previous one to that, I just arrived at Bewdley and it was at the end of the day. And I was too tired, to be frank with you, to, to carry on doing filming and pieces to camera. Then also the, the museum had closed by that time of the day. So I started that video by going through the museum in Bewdley. And if you're ever in that area, I highly recommend a visit to there. It tells you a lot about the River Severn and its history as well. So I then went on to Starport and I did have a problem at Starport. I won't go on about that because I'll mention that, more about that in another video that landed this month. And I had a top comment from Seven Way 16 from Faith G, who always regularly comments on my channel. And she writes uh, humorously, I wonder if the late Len Goodman, do you know, Strictly Come Dancing, he was one of the top judges on that programme for ooh, 10, 15 years, I believe. Was he a Sabrina fan? And that's why he always shouted seven. Yes, <laughs> thank you for that, Faith. That's brilliant, yes, love it, love it. Blaze in Bristol. No, the next video wasn't a video about a fire in Bristol. That's Blaze with an S, not with a Z. And that is a small part or a hamlet of Bristol. I started that video off looking at the Blaze Hamlet National Trust, those beautiful thatched properties there, which are really, really well worth exploring. Near that is a Blaze Park, the castle and the manor house or mansion house. And that was also open as a museum. Had that, also had trouble with sirens going off there. They test them, is it once a month on a Saturday or end of the month or something? Anyway, these sirens went off. It, they really scared the heck out of me because they are quite terrifying air raid type sounding sirens. But it was really, really good to see that place. And I had a top comment from that video from Jesse's Grand Day Out. Jesse writes, I keep forgetting about Blaze. It's a place I can only remember for visiting once before. So it was great seeing it again. I do know that it's on the Bristol Community Forest Path. I didn't know that, so thank you for that, Jesse. And it's a fabulous walk to follow, though it's 45 miles in total. So yes, it's a bit less than the Monarch's Way we have here, but still, yeah, it's not something you could really do in a day, probably, probably three or four days to get around that comfortably around Bristol. A green avenue, I would imagine, around Bristol. So thank you very much, Jesse, for a great comment there, and I'll put a link into Jesse's. Uh, Jesse is a, a newer YouTuber. His his uh, vid channels I go in about six months or so. So he does uh, stuff around Bristol, Bath, Bath and Northeast, Somerset, North Somerset, that kind of area. Loads of things in that area. So I'll put a link to his uh, channel in the description of today's. Before I continue on to the next video on the channel for the month, we're going to have a tour now at this most beautiful of Cotswold villages here in Chedworth.
There is a playlist on my channel called Autism and Mental Health. Now, occasionally I do return to this topic. I did the first one when I was living in South Devon when I visited a old, well, it was a, a mental health institution. It wasn't actually called that. The term that they used in those days was quite offensive, but uh, I did a video there telling you about the experience of people with autism back in the 19th and 20th centuries, and it wasn't pleasant at all. I did a subsequent video about my own experiences and this month I did my latest video on the topic as well. And the reason that it came to prominence again is because, well, I often struggle with my mental health. It's not something that, that ever goes away. Even today I've been feeling quite anxious on the drive over here because it's a tricky drive with narrow lanes. But I, this doing this, doing pieces to camera and photography and videography and editing gives me a real focus. But I can't do it all the time. I can only do it when I'm able to do it. And that's what that video is about, really, because at the end of uh, the Seven Way, when I was at Starport on Seven, which I previously mentioned, lots of people came up to me. There was at least three, and there was a couple of after that bumped into me as well. And they wanted long conversations, which I find quite draining, particularly with people that I don't know or don't know very well. I find it really, really difficult. Conversations can be really, really trying for me, and it completely really drained me. Anyway, I made a video all about it. And I thank you if you've watched it because I launched the Blaze in Bristol one at the time thinking that most people are gonna be interested in autism and mental health. There'll be a few people that it will be uh, relevant to, but most people will be more interested in the Blaze. The exact opposite has happened. The autism and mental health one has had more than twice the views of the Blaze in Bristol video. Not only that, it's been a very, very heavily commented video. Some fantastic video uh, comments, shall I say, on that video. I haven't got time to read them all out, but if you were interested in that video, or you have watched it, and you haven't gone back and checked the comments, please go and check the comments, because there's some very, very moving comments on there. I've only got time to just read two of them, but they were all exceptional. I'd love to read all of them out, right? I say I don't just have time to do that, but they were brilliant, so if you commented on it, I do thank you very much. Anyway, here we go. One of them was um, from a gentleman called Simon Law Photography. Now, Simon lives in the Brixham area of South Devon. That's somewhere I used to, to work. I lived on the other side of the, the river there, the River Dark, catching the ferry every day. Simon Law, I believe, started his YouTube video around the same time I did. He's an excellent photographer, particularly landscape photography. So if you want to know more about landscape photography, a video is devoted to that subject. He does lots of stuff on the coast of South Devon and on Dartmoor too, I digress. His brilliant comment was, thank you for sharing such a personal video. My grandson, now age 13, has autism. Your personal insights are, are very helpful. We are always very mindful of the situations we may place him in when he spends time with us, but also quite relaxed about it. Anything that raises awareness of people's differences and that we are all different is a good thing to do. I really thank you very much for that, Simon. You sound like brilliant grandparents to your grandson, so thank you for that. And thank you for your understanding and taking the time to look and learn about autism so you can help your grandson further. Thank you. The next comment from that video was from a lady called Nigella. Thanks a lot. All your videos are interesting, but this one stands out. When there is so much negativity, your videos lead to grating understanding. And there, yes, I thank you very much for Nigel. And there was lots of comments on a similar theme. Some people that don't have any indication or knowledge, power knowledge of autism at all, found it wealth worthwhile. And some people were commenting it from the mental health aspect that they've struggled with mental health in recent years and they found it very helpful too. So as I say, again, if you commented on that video, I do very, very much appreciate it. Now, before I go on, I'd like to mention another video that's on YouTube. It's on a channel called Special Books for Special Kids. It's not a channel, anything to do with books. It's a long convoluted reason why it's called that, that name. I have a friend who I met on Twitter many, many years ago. She's called Charlotte Finn likes to be known as Charlie. Charlie, like me, has autism. She also has Down syndrome. And last year, she got married to a gentleman who also has autism. Anyway, the gentleman that does the channel is brilliant. I've forgotten the gentleman's name, but he's brilliant. He goes around interviewing people with various different disabilities. Similar to the comment that Simon Law makes, it's always worth looking out for people that have differences and getting an understanding of them. And that channel does that brilliantly well. Anyway, he came along to to Charlie's house in America. She was originally lived in the UK in Surrey and went over to marry her American husband. 
a fiance as was at the time. And uh, they've got uh, a lovely house there. And Charlotte is an amazing person. So if you want a greater insight to Down syndrome as well as autism, I can highly recommend, or I can't highly recommend that video enough. And I'll put a link to Charlie's video, which now has, wait for this, well over three million views. How about that? Three million views on YouTube, but uh, it's well worth a, a, a look. And thank you, Charlie, for your tremendous interview. It was brilliant. And thank you for the channel for doing that as well and supporting people with disabilities. Now, just on the field here, you have the steps, looks like terraces. I think they've been made by the cattle, but I think also because of the undulations, there was possibly either a settlement on that side or some Neolithic remains. I'm not sure. There is also around Chedworth another Roman site marked on the OS map. I haven't explored it myself, but I think it's marked as a Roman temple. I'll show that on the screen now so you can have a look at it. So if you want to come to this village and explore it, further, which I highly recommend you do if you live in this part of the world or you're holidaying around the Cotswolds because it's a wonderful place. I never turn my attention to the most viewed video on the month and no surprise for guessing what that was. It was a Stroudwater and Thames and Seven Canals update number 14. I will continue doing this series as and when things happen on the development or the redevelopment and the restoration of the Stroudwater and Thames and Seven Canals, collectively known as the Cotswold Canals, less of a mouthful. The, use, the reason I use the longer name is because sometimes people don't always know if they're not local to this part of the Cotswolds, what is meant by the Cotswolds Canal. So that's why I use the longer term. So people might be searching for Stroudwater or Thames and Seven on YouTube to, to try and find information about what's happening with the restoration. Anyway, that video up, went up and I explained in that why not actually a lot of air restoration has happened, but I did manage to get onto a boat trip from Ebley Wharf and that was most delightful. Beautiful sunny day, getting the shots of the boat going through and I hope to do that again on the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal, which is also a boat, electric boat, run by the Cotswold Canals Trust as well. I had a top comment on that video from Lee, who underwent a painful knee operation not long ago so I hope your knee is recovering Lee and his comment is as follows so good to see people out enjoying a run because I also included the uh, lock challenge which had happened the previous month in uh, April as well in that or I think it was no, early early part of May all the time seems to be merging together it's sometimes difficult with YouTube to to try and remember when when things actually happened between the locks and lovely sea the Thames and Seven open to the Stroud Brewery site. It's getting closer inch by inch. Yes, it is. So in that video, I explained that they've dredged now out from Royal Bridge because some of it wasn't passable, even though it had been restored a while ago. And it's now clear so that boat that the Cotswold Canals Trust have, Perseverance can now make its way all the way up to a Stroud Brewery Wharf. So these are these steps or ridges that I can see, as I say, I don't know the historical connotations of them. There's also a technical word for them as well. And I've forgotten that. I should know that because I covered it when I was doing the Cotswold Way. Not that it goes through Chedworth, but I saw similar uh, various locations on the Cotswold Way. If I can find out what that is, I'll put that in the usual way below. Next video, we hen headed back to North Devon after our visit to Lynmouth. I was over a stunning place called Welcome Beach. What an amazing place that is, complete with a brilliant waterfall. And I was there having a few days holiday actually, and it was at the end of the, the holiday, it was the last day, I'd actually went there with a, a family friend and her partner and we, we stayed nearby. And the final evening we walked down to that beach, no one else out, I think there was one person there was actually, um, uh, what's it called? Not f free camping, fly camping. You know what I'm trying to say. Wild camping, that's the one. <laughs> he was camping near that uh, waterfall, but apart from that, there was uh, no one else there. There was somebody on the beach and then they, or a couple of people, and they, they left and they had the place for ourselves. So it was great for, uh, for doing photography and uh, videography and uh, the sounds there were just, well, if you've seen the video, you'll know what I mean. It is a brilliant place. And again, not that well known. So, but you do really need to walk there rather than trying to drive because the, there is a National Trust car park, but the road to it. No, not great for your tyres or suspension, so probably best to park up 
and walk back down. Anyway, I had a talk coming that from Donna's Adventures. Donna lives in Canada and she does some brilliant ones. Just done a great video about totem poles. If you want to know about the indigenous population of Canada, that's a tremendous video and she has uh, inside knowledge of that. So what, check that out. I'll put the description of that one in today's video. So there'll be lots of descriptions and links into the description of today's video. But uh, yeah, so Donna writes, Thank you for watching, don't I? And thank you for regularly. I know it's hard as a creator trying to do stuff, trying to research and then film and then edit and then reply to your own comments as well and then reply to other YouTubers. But uh, I don't always have time to do it myself, but uh, I do appreciate it when other YouTubers do it. So uh, thank you for Donna. Donna. Wow, Paul, I loved the intro to this. The lush ferns and the waves splashing on the rocks was a great intro to the area. There is such a variety of landscapes, yes there was, to enjoy the forest and then the beach. Love the rock formations with a stream and waterfall. I would love visiting this place. Yes, I, I, I believe many people would after probably after watching that video. Hopefully not too many, but again it's our little West Country Wanderings secret here on YouTube. <laughs> Now, I try to cover lots of different things on my channel to give you a flavour of the entire West Country Wanderings region. And as I say, it's not just about Devon and Cornwall. It's not just about canals, but I also cover railways. And I try to do that from different ways because I know lots of people like different things. And I do regularly return to heritage lines and they are great for capturing the atmosphere of yesterday year and the volunteers that work on those lines do an incredible job of doing that, the painting on it and all the artifacts like you get the luggage and the lamps and the, the little second-hand bookshops and the tea rooms. It's all just a picture postcard perfect, isn't it? Uh, and the West Somerset Railway is no exception. And I did a video, I think it was last year, probably this time last year, I went to Bishop's Lydiard and had a good look around the station there, including its museum. But this time I went to watch it. I arrived at Bishop's Lydiard, caught the train to watch it, so in some views from that and we had a look around the lovely town of watch it too so it was kind of a, a viewing around a town in west somerset by the coast or by the harbour there and also a railway one as well so it's kind of a trying to a, a bit to, to please everyone in that but uh, i had a great uh, comment from bob laval who i don't think i've heard from before so if you are a new subscriber well, i'm not sure but uh, thank you for your comment anyway i read your comment you covered a lot of ground here and i'm glad you touched on the mineral line yes there is a mineral line that goes from watch it to Washford, which is in the Brendan Hills, which I have not yet covered on uh, YouTube, on my channel. So I'll put that right, and I'll probably do that as a Lost Railway walk. More about those Lost Railway walks. <laughs> Just keep watching for that. I remember when the track was still embedded in the tarmac at the harbour entrance. Oh, that's fantastic. I'd love to have uh, taken some photographs. Yes, when I, I look at, uh, thank you, Bob, for your comment. That's brilliant. When I look at uh, Facebook and I see some of the photographs that people have took in the 60s and 70s, I think, well, why didn't I go around uh, when I was living in Gloucester at the time taking photographs of these uh, railway lines that are about to close or just closed or just become disused because there's so much interest in that now. I, I wasn't really into photography until I was in probably in the early 80s or late 70s, early 80s. So I, I didn't have the kit or the, the knowledge or the know-how to have done it anyway. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed my day there. And thank you, Bob, for your brilliant comment. Now, as I explained, I like to sometimes do two videos in one day if I'm in a particular location. And I, the next video is the one I shot first, um, which was the Lost Canal one. But before or after the end of the day, I then went to the Herefordshire town of Bromyard to do a, another short bike photography series. A stunning place. And uh, it's a, one of those towns that people probably pass by on the road between Starport and Lempster, or maybe going on into to Mid Wales or somewhere else or into the West Midlands. But uh, it's well worth exploring this town. And I had a great comment from a fellow YouTuber, a lady called Anita, who has a YouTube channel called Omar Far Away. Way. and she is a Dutch Kiwi person, has, has done videos on Holland as well as New Zealand as well as places in the UK and I'll read what she writes now. When you mentioned Bromyard I thought oh I know where that is, then my mind went blank. I then noticed the apple carving, I just knew I'd seen it. I checked my phone and lo and behold we ate in Bromyard recently on the 28th of May. 
I'm glad you posted this as we didn't get chance to tour around or discover Bromyard at all. And it is well worth doing. Thank you very much for that, Anita. And uh, thank you for your excellent videos on your channel as well. Really enjoy it. I don't have time to watch all of them, unfortunately, because of other, all the other things that I'm doing for, for creating content on the channel. But uh, if I do get chance, I do dip in and out of your channel. But uh, I'll, again, I'll put a link into your channel in the description of today's. And thank you very much for your comment. And if you watched that uh, video on Bromyard, I also had a comment from Bromyard Tourist Information Office on Twitter, who are also very interested in that video too. Now with my canal series, like with my railway series, I, I do videos that are doing a different aspect. So they're not all kind of the one thing. So the railway series aren't all about heritage lines. They're about more modern things because we've got uh, Marsh Barton station opening up, haven't we, in July. So that'll be a railway series one probably in July. Uh, down uh, Exeter, if that is, in, in Devon. So uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll do something on that. But the canal ones aren't just about uh, looking at canals that are like the Kennet and Avon, which have been restored, or like the Cotswold canals, which are being restored, but also sometimes it's about completely lost canals. And that was the case with the next video. I went over to both Worcestershire and Herefordshire looking for the remains of the Lempster Canal. Wow, that aqueduct, tremendous. I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it, but uh, it was just tremendous. And I do hope to go back to that area again, because there is so much more to see of that canal, which is very little known. There was only about two or three videos. One was a couple of guys going into one of the tunnels. There's four, I've now found out there's four tunnels on the Lemster Canal, and they took a canoe. Uh, not something I'd fancy doing. It's very, very narrow and low, and there's been rockfalls in it, but uh, they took a go on the video. So uh, that, was, that was really interesting, but there's very little else telling you much about it. So I will go back there again. I had a comment on that video from Ron from Abandoned Railway Adventures, another YouTube creator. Lots of history to uncover here. And the wharf house looks stunning. Yes, it did. Uh, kind of like a Dutch style to it. And I think that was the headquarters of the Lempster Canal, though it's really hard to establish full facts on it because there's very little that's been documented on it. I think you're right about the canal's purpose. It is most likely coal coming in and out of and agri products going out. Yes, I think you're absolutely right there, Ron, but uh, it was never anything that was going to raise much money or revenue for the owners or indeed the shareholders that lost all of their investments on that canal. After I did my West Somerset railway video, I then headed over to the coast. It was evening and the light was gorgeous and I headed down to Kilve Beach. Brilliant place. What an amazing place for geology and looking at fossils. And it also has a little waterfall that trickles through. After I shot it, because I didn't, because it was, uh, I hadn't planned it, I just decided to go there on the spur of the moment after doing the West Somerset Railway one. It wasn't a planned visit, so I hadn't done my research. And if you hadn't done your research, sometimes you can come a little a bit unstuck, because that was the case with shooting that video. Because although I captured and told a little bit about the fossils and the geology on the beach, what I hadn't reckoned on was the building that you see by the car park. However, one of my very knowledgeable subscribers, a gentleman called John Timbrell, mentioned before, he had all the knowledge on that and he checked some more information on YouTube and he told me about it and it's absolutely fascinating. I'll just read you his comment. The brick building, which I've now since learnt to be known what is known in the chemical industry as a retort. And you may remember this from your chemistry lessons at school. There's like a, it looks like a small watering can with uh, like a tiny little thing, except it's made out of glass. And the spout, rather than going up, curves down to get condensed fluids in that little curve of the uh, bit there. That, that's what that building looked like, hence the funny thing on the top of it. it was designed to remove oil from the shale rocks. Wow, I didn't know that. The freshly exposed rocks can be set alight because they contain oil. Now, thank you very much for that, John. The story continues because there was a scam. They wanted investors to invest lots of money saying it was going to be the new Texas. They were going to get loads and loads of oil from West Somerset, but it didn't kind of work out. And again, all the investors lost all of their money. Finally, for this month on the channel, two more videos, one of which I can't give you anything on, and that was the uh, Seven Way 17, where we, I walked to the city of Worcester, but uh, that's gone up now, but I haven't seen the comments on that, so uh, I can't read out any comments from it as I'm filming this one. But the other one is the uh, Kinnerton Kyneton. 
Kinton. Now, there's been some dispute over the pronunciation. The army pronounce it one way, the locals pronounce it another one. I'm not going to get into the argument of that. It's Kinnerton to me, but uh, if, you, if you live locally, it might be something else. So Kinton, Kinton, whatever. Take your pick. Uh, military railway, and that's in Warwickshire. Now, because my military railway, Bicester, now that's definitely the right pronunciation on that one, Bicester, not Bicester, um, because that was so popular, in fact, it's the most viewed video on my channel, uh, which I find amazing because it's not really in the core area or the core kind of thing that I do. So uh, yeah, so that was probably because I thought, I did that a year ago, and at the back of my mind I thought, is there another military row I can do? And it's just kind of on the northeastern edge of West Country Wanderings region, the little bit of Edge Hill, which is the Cotswold Ridge, sticks just right into that part of Warwickshire there near a village called Fenny Compton, and that's where the line diverges away from the main line, main Chiltern Railway line. I had a look around there the other day. I had some really great comments on that, and it's been climbing quite nicely, that uh, video, in terms of popularity. There's nothing on YouTube about that railway at all. I mean, literally zero. There's shots of trains in different locations, not going into, not using the railway line, but uh, in, on different parts of the main line, uh, to uh, bring in ammunitions in and out of that. But uh, yeah, so that's the only video on YouTube about it. And a great comment from fellow YouTuber Louise from South West Handers. Hi, Louise. And she writes, love the heavy motor car sign. Yes, now there was a sign left over from the Stratford and Midland R Junction railway sign by the bridge there over the remains of the railway that went on to Kinton, Kinton, Kinton. Um, there, so I did a piece to camera, not piece to camera. I didn't do any pieces of camera in that video apart from the intro and the outro because it just wasn't possible because it would just raise suspicions because of all the MOD and police activity in that area. So that was a great sign to see. Louise goes on to write, Kinton, Kinton village looks really picturesque. Unfenced level crossings looks a bit dangerous. No barriers. Yes, thank you, Louise. Thanks for your comment and uh, congratulations on uh, your latest numbers that you're flying on content. Now, really brilliant to see, so well done. Yes, you've got uh, unfenced level crossings, not only on the little farm tracks, which I suppose they could tell the farmer if a train's coming, but worryingly on a B road between the village and the Oxfordshire town of Banbury. It's quite a fastish road, it's a fairly state road. You've got warnings, flashing warning signs, but again, no barriers. And considering what those trains are carrying around the depot, I don't know why. Mm, interesting. So thank you if you've watched any of my videos this month. I really do appreciate it, particularly if you've shared, liked, subscribed or commented on any of them. Thanks very much. Now, before I forget to mention it, I haven't been able to do the tunnel here at Chedworth today. I hope to do that on a future video because it's a video unto itself really, Well, I did have in the back of my mind maybe to put it in today's vlog, but uh, it's quite an exploration and quite a walk because you have to kind of walk up to the north portal and then walk back. But uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to, well, I won't be able to fit that in today. In the meantime, if you want to know what that tunnel looks like before I do one here myself, then I highly recommend Ron from Parkinson's Walks video, which I did, I think he did about four or five years ago now. It's an excellent video, really shows you. He also looks at the site of where Chedworth station was. I'll see if I can find a station and what it looked like when it was working, because it was an old railway carriage. It was just simply a halt. It was originally built as a single track line and then widened in 1908, become double track. But uh, yes, really, really brilliant place. Before I go, just tell you what's coming up on the channel for the month of July. Probably won't be quite as busy as June because I had to say it's 14 videos, so it'll probably be more like 10 for July, but we'll see how we go. But uh, I've got a few things planned. The first thing I'll be landing is one that's been filmed, not yet edited, as a collaboration I did with Alice and Harrod, two other YouTubers, I'll tell you all about that. I visited a city which is outside of the area I cover. It's in Warwickshire, but it's in, well, it's not in Warwickshire at all. You can scrub that. It's in the West Midlands, so it's a very urban city. Uh, so it's not the sort of thing I normally do, but it's a convenient place for us all to meet up. But I had a brilliant time there in Coventry. I was most impressed with that city. So that's coming up soon. Excuse me, it's a fly around me. There'll also be seven way 17 which as i say landed and there'll be seven way not in that will be seven way 17a which i will cover the city of worcester because i didn't have time to do it at the end of 17 and then hopefully there'll be 18 which takes me from worcester to the worcestershire town of upton upon seven which is a most delightful place indeed I'm then going to be doing a, a Western Supermare video, but not as a tourist. I want to go and have a look at Burnbeck Pier and down to 
Sandy Bay as well, that kind of area in the, the uh, so the northern, so the town centre and north of there. So I hope to be filming that over the next few days actually. Definitely going to be doing something on the Somerset Roll. Uh, Somerset and Dorset Roll, I know I said that before, uh, but I do certainly hope to, to do something with that. And also the Wilts and Barks Canal. And a lost railway walk. We didn't have one in uh, June and we don't think we have one in May uh, either. So uh, that's a missing. Another really big missing was two of them actually. One is a Cotswold walk. I've not done one of those, a proper Cotswold walk for a couple of months. So I'll put that right. And a part of the West Country I've not covered for some time. Can you guess what it is? Yes, Dorset. I've not been to the county of Dorset for some time, so I certainly hope to bring something for Dorset to you in the month of July. I hope you enjoy the content on West Country Wanderings. Again, thanks for all your comments and likes and shares and watching and subscribes. It really does mean the world to me. And I hope to see you on the channel again very, very soon. All the best for now. Cheers now. Goodbye.